Hello, hello, geniuses. My name is Vera. I'm, I'm a possibility management trainer. And it is my speciality. I'm actually, the, the name of my vocation is to be a midwife for evolution. I'm an evolution midwife. But instead of midwifing babies into the world, I midwife evolution. And so just as a midwife, there's babies that have, that just have a very easy birth and babies that don't have an easy birth. There's, there's the beautiful miracle of birth, but there's also complications. There's also the, there's the pushing, there's the, the trans, the whole transformational journey of, of supporting a person into giving birth. That's also what I am in, like I'm, I, I'm with people that I'm holding space for in the, in the miracles and deep in the trenches. And so I welcome you here from that space. This, this workshop is experiential. So this is not a talk where it's just going to be me saying a lot of cool ideas or giving you a, a bunch of theory that you go home and be like, okay, that's a good idea or, or not, that's a shit idea. And it's really a space where I'm going to present a few things and ask you to go to breakout rooms so that you can practice. And then you share, what do you discover? And then we go again, we go into a, a next practice. And so it would be, it's, it's possible to, to, to be here because I know this is a big conference and from everybody's in different parts of the world, especially people who are in, in locations in the world where it's, the internet connection is not so great for video. But if you can, if you really can, it would be great to have your video. This is because part of the, the actual experiment of learning from the unknown has to do with vulnerability. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Todd and others. So I, I'm going to speak from a context that is not a very common context in the world. So we're in this amazing conference that is about education and reimagining education, decolonizing education, depatriarching the, the education. And one of the things that education has... Um, it's in its hallmarks, part of the colonized educational uh, structure, part of the whole scientific method, part of the whole um, patriarchy is a, a kind of obsession with knowing and understanding. And if your learning, if your learning is limited by what you can, what, by what you can understand, then there, there is so much, there is just so much dimensions of life, of, of life unfolding, of learning unfolding that you will not be able to touch because you will have an internal rule, an internal belief that you have to understand, to receive, to experience, to witness, to even accept or be with in, in your life. And that's an incredible amount of potential that you will not be having access to. Now, in a lot of uh, a lot of uh, in innovation circles, uh, regenerative circles, regenerative education, but also regenerating the earth, uh, there's a lot of this idea that we are in a crisis, not just a crisis of climate change, not just a crisis of identity, but we are in a crisis of imagination. George Monbiot would say that we, we are in a crisis of, of imagination because we cannot imagine a future. We cannot imagine a future that is different from who we are right now. And one of the things that I for example, one of the films that I love, I really love, is this kind of very kind of blockbustery film uh, from from the United States called V for Vendetta. And so, this in this film V for Vendetta, there's a whole revolution that happens. There's this guy called V who is 
in in a position of being a pirate, like a, a rebel outside the society that comes in to destabilize, disrupt society, and and basically uh, throw down by killing in that in the film, throw down the people who are in positions of power, who have led the country, that nation, to be an autocratic, um, super rigid, really um, like a dictatorship. And he, there's a whole process of being disillusioned and and the, the, the whole people of that nation feeling like, yes, we have the power back. We are gonna create a whole new society. But at the end of that film, even though it's amazing, amazing really, like people can come out of that film with this anger, with this like determination to change society. If I think, who are the people that are gonna be in, the, in power in that story? Who are the people who are going to replace the ones that were there? And what makes them different? Because if the internal structures of how we relate to the world are not changed, we can take out the person on top of the hierarchy, but the person that we're going to replace them with is just going to do the same thing. So if we are to imagine a new future, if we are to imagine a new kind of education, we need to change the way that we think about ourselves and the world. We need to need to think about what we think with, not what we think about, but place our eyes in the, in the stories that we have about the world, in the potential that we can see in the world. And if we don't have imagination, if we don't have, um, if we don't question the things that we hold dear, then we're just going to create the same thing that's, that we've created. We're going to create a same organization, a same structure, because we cannot imagine it outside. And so the contexts, there are not many, not many organizations, not many contexts out there that are radical enough to get out of the safety of the norm, the safety of what is acceptable. But in that way, if you really want to reimagine education, if you want to imagine relationship, if you want to reimagine society, you need to step outside, just at the edge of society, at the edge of what is acceptable in relationship and, and, and really create from the nothing, create from the unknown. And if you limit that creation from what you know, what you are familiar with, what you understand, you're only going to create more of the same, maybe different words, different brand, but nothing really deep really at the core changes. So how do you how do you go into the unknown? Well, in possibility management, which is the co context that I've that I'm coming with, it's a, a 30, it's a it exists for over 30 years. And it is a context that is based on radical responsibility. And one of the experiments that I've been doing with people in in this organization called the Possibilitator Training. The Possibilitator Training is an ecoversity that has been um, developing this, how to develop skills from the unknown. How do we think completely outside the box and how do we discover from, from, from other resources than our mind, than our familiarity, than what is comfortable for us? And what, what happens when we do not put comfort at the center of our lives, when we don't put the understanding at the center of our lives? What can happen? And so this is not a conversation about the possibilitator training. I'm just telling you this. There's so much out there. There are communities of practice for people to really practice learning and walking in the unknown. And so what is, you know, if you think about it, if you compare what is known and what is not known to you, how big do you think your known is? Just show, show it with your hands. Like, is, you, is what you know compared to what you don't know, is it this big? Is it this big? Show it. This, yeah. Someone's trying to squeeze 
micrometers. Yeah, it's pretty small. So, so imagine you're trying to squeeze discovery, life, learning, transformation, inspiration, empowerment. You're squeezing it through a very tight squint <laughs> sphincter, really. If anyone, has anyone tried to, try to poop through a very tight splinter? I know I'm just kind of bringing the level a little bit down. It's painful. It's painful. It's painful for your creative process. But this is what we have been used to doing because almost every single person has gone through a schooling process that squeezes it, squeezes it through a very narrow canal. And so we need to unlearn this. We need to heal the wounds from our, our creative sphincter and to open ourselves to basically a lot more resources, resources that are not understanding. And so what happens when you start going into that journey of opening resources without understanding? Our mind thinks we're going to go crazy. Just, just imagine that you suddenly start speaking, you practice something new, you're going to look weird. You're going, to, you're, you're going to start acting in a very different way. But that's where, that's where aliveness lives. When you're really in direct contact with experimenting. And so we are going to do a whole bunch of experiments that are designed to open those that just relaxing that sphincter a little bit more, open up the canal and, and have fun doing it, okay? And so the first thing is that you cannot navigate the unknown unless you have access to your conscious fear. You can't. So most people in the world have this idea that fear is bad. If I have fear, something's wrong. Something bad's about to happen. Go back to safety. Stay in the safe zone. Fear is bad. And it's totally understandable because it comes from this generations and generations and generations of survivalism. We, we need fear to survive. And so if we have danger, danger going around around us, we go, all right, back to safety. But we have, as human beings, evolved that we don't need to be in the survivalism the whole time. You know, yes, there's also so a lot of dangers in the world, but, but we have created enough resources, enough tools, enough civilization that, you know, we luckily for me, and I know I'm privileged in that way, I, I don't have, you know, I, I'm not in the middle of the jungle and a jaguar is going to eat me. I don't have to worry about that. Unfortunately, I'm in this because people killed all the wolves and all the bears in the country that I'm in, which is not, uh, not something that I, I, I condone. And we have created spaces for safety. We have created spaces where we are, we're okay enough in our survivalism that we can dare to go the next step. We can risk. So this is what we're going to do. But if you go into an unknown and every time you feel fear, you go back to safety. What do you think happens to your learning process, to your transformational process? And you can speak, you can speak. Give me, what do you think happens? You're, you're trying to learn something new. You're trying to do something new. And then suddenly you feel fear. What do you do? Go ahead, Dahlia. Yeah, you get petrified. In a sense, you become a mummy, <laughs> a living mummy. <laughs> Because, you become a mummy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because go ahead. Yeah. Because if, uh, if I do not, uh, I mean, if I am all the time uh, centered around my comfort, uh, I, I lose my humanity. I lose the possibilities and I can become truly a uh, danger to others and to nature. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, darling. And so. Can you say this again, Liz? It validates the fear. And so then it becomes a, a cycle. What validates the fear? That, that response you have <clears throat> when you face the fear. 
you you think, oh, I, I was right. I should have been fearful instead of. Because I freeze. Yeah. And freezing yeah. is not okay. That's that's the underlying assumption is that freezing is somehow not okay. That means I should have never done this. Go back to safety. Exactly. And what happens is those assumptions are usually not even question because of that perpetuating cycle. And actually more and more people around the world are questioning this assumption that fear means death or fear means wrong. Fear means bad. Fear always means threatening life danger. And they're, they're willing to go through steps of maturing their relationship to fear. What if fear is not bad? What potential can I get? What, what other access to what other things can I get? What if I feel fear and I don't freeze? But there's a process. There's a whole process. I used to freeze. I mean, right now I am scared. I am super scared because I'm speaking from a kind of unknown. I have no idea what I'm going to say next. I, I didn't, I don't have a, a session plan. This is what I say next. I, I didn't write a book and I'm just taking notes from my book that I just wrote and I'm promoting my book or something. I'm, I'm not speaking from that. I'm speaking from an experience. I'm like speaking from a potential. And, and I need to be scared. I need to be, to feel, and, and is what I'm saying landing? Are you guys with me? Am I going too fast? I mean, going too slow. Can I really listen to you? And these, these questions are questions that you can ask with your conscious fear. You know, conscious fear, thank you, Lakshmi. Conscious fear is the fear that doesn't freeze. Conscious fear is the free, is the fear that doesn't, you don't do the, the fight, flight, fawn, uh, freeze response. It's, it's conscious fear is this energy that you use to scan, that you use to sense, that we all do that. We all do that. But we can learn to do it. You can learn to do it even when the, the intensity of the fear is high so that you can speak to a big group of people, so that you can scan into the unknown, so that you can walk into the unknown. And so... We're going to have our first practice here first in the group, which is to navigate the fear. You would need to, we're not going to go high fear. Don't worry. So it's not about activating anyone's trauma here. It's really about accessing our nervous system, accessing our emotional body in a centered and adult way and conscious way. So the first step that I'm going to share with you, a tool is a very simple tool about how to be centered. And when I mean centered, it, it means aligning your physical body with your energetic body. An energetic body is not some, it's not like a new age thing. It's, it's the sensation that you have about your personal space and timing and what is yours and what's not yours. It's, it's um, a kind of interface that you use to navigate the world. So for example, if you're sitting in a physical circle in a room and someone sits right next to you, most of you will kind of allow some space. You will almost automatically move to adjust to the physical space because you sensed with your energetic body when the person is too close to you and when the person is not close to you at all. Okay. So you, you already have that interface, but you might not know that, you know, I call that an um, uh, energetic body. And so you're going to, we're going to practice aligning your energetic body, your sense of space and speed and ownership of self with your physical body so that you are here. You really, you, you align, you center yourself. And so how we're going to do this and you, you're invited to practice is that you first put your attention, you put your attention on your attention. Just pay attention to what you are paying attention, all the bits of attention, you know, might be in my voice, might be in your head, might be in understanding, might be in, in what you had for breakfast, dinner, or lunch, or the kids in the next room, 
whatever it was, you might still have some attention on the previous talk or previous space you were in. Just, just notice where your attention is. Don't need to do anything with it, just notice. And then move that attention, move that attention into concentrated, concentrate your attention, this ownership, your, your attention, your power of focusing your energy. You concentrate it into, into a, a, a ball. You don't need to visualize it. Just, just bring your attention into a kind of a, a ball, kind of the size of a grapefruit. And when you have it concentrated, this is your energetic center. You move your energetic center all the way inside your body to your physical center, which is two centimeters or two fingers below the belly button right inside your body, yeah, in front of your spine. And you can do this with your eyes open or your eyes closed because you're moving your energetic center. And, and it's a sensation. There's a sensation and experience that happens when you have your energetic center on your physical center. It sits there. It's like a not being forward, not being back. It's just just right <laughs> okay and so when you have your center your energetic center aligned with your physical center there more things can be possible because you're not worried about fear it's not about worrying about fear you're not in the future you're not in the past you're right here right now which is the only place that you have power so if you notice that your center goes back somewhere, you can bring it back. You can bring it back to your physical center. And, and now when I was learning this tool, I used to put my hand right in front of my, of my center, like right, right in front of my belly, just to remind me to, to bring my energetic center there. And so you can do that too. And breathe and just breathe. Nowhere to go nothing to do, nowhere to be, just here. You are already being. Cool. Is there any, anything that you want to say? Like, how does it, how do you experience that this state of being centered? You don't have to share, but if, if you have something, if you have something like a clear, like, wow, this is how it feels to be centered, you're welcome to share right now. Cool. Thank you, Liz. Yeah. Okay. So now that we're centered, we can go into territory of fear. To go into experimenting with fear yes dolly exactly whatever happens is okay great so if we're going to the territory of fear we go centered because whatever happens i'm here for it exactly like dolly said we're going to start really really slowly really low intensity fear and we're going to do a practice together and then you're going to go out into breakout rooms to do a practice just with, with a team, okay? And, and this is gonna be very experiential. And so the first thing that I'd like you to do is to pick, pick an, um, a, sit, um, a story, pick an object, pick an object from around you. It could be your notebook, it could be your phone, it could be your, even your computer, it could be your, the wall, a window. Just pick one element from, from your surroundings. Once you pick them, just look at that object and allow all your fears about that object come up, come up. And so for example, I'm gonna pick up this glass of water. I'm gonna show what, what I do. So I'm picking up the glass of water. I'm looking at the glass of water. And instead of thinking about what I'm scared about, 
I'm allowing the fear to well up, to just come up to the surface and tell me what, what is the fear about. So I don't go, I don't search with my head. I let the sensation of fear of my body, for me, it feels like a little, a, a very subtle rush, a kind of a tension, a kind of tension, fear tension coming up and it brings information. So I'm letting the, the fear sensation come up. And when I look at the, at the glass, I first, the first thing that I think is, is this water clean? I'm scared that the water has chemicals. I'm scared that there's detergent somewhere in the, in the glass, and then I'm going to drink detergent. I'm scared because there's, I don't know how many people in the world don't have access to this, to the, to water like I do right now. I'm scared I'm not holding the glass properly and it's going to break and it's going to ruin the space that I have with you. I'm scared that I, my, my throat is um, dry and I actually need to drink a little bit of water right now. I'm actually now noticing that I'm thirsty and I, I didn't notice it before. I'm scared that the bubbles that I'm seeing means that something's wrong with the water. I don't know why. Yeah, just a few fears. And the fears don't need to be reasonable. Okay? They do not need to be reasonable. They're just fears that come up. Things that could potentially happen, could potentially, it, it, it can be super far out, but it's, it's a real fear coming, coming from you. Okay, so I'd like you to practice this. You're going to go into into breakout rooms in groups of two. So Atul, would you would you create the breakout rooms? Make sure that Spanish people are together. And basically, what you're going to do, you're going to have just four minutes each person, four or five minutes each person, and you're going to go into the breakout room with your object, a wall, whatever your hair something that you have, and you're going to allow the experience of fear to come up. And then you're just going to say what I, kind of what I did. I'm scared. I'm scared that this, I'm scared because this, I'm scared because that. Without censoring, no censoring, just allowing the fear to speak. Okay. And the other person, you just listen. You are present. You don't interrupt. You just hold space you witness the other person just experiencing consciously their fear, okay? Just a maximum of five minutes. We're probably going to do this for just three minutes and then come back, okay? This is really, really just very, very simple. And it's guaranteed, it is guaranteed that it's going to feel weird, okay? You might think, oh, I'm making this up. Uh, this, I, I don't know. I can't do it. It's okay. There is no pressure, no expectation that you suddenly can do a new skill firsthand. Okay, this is experimenting a new skill. Okay, so is there any question about the about the exercise? Yes. So Go ahead. If I don't have fears, the the thing that just instantly comes up. To me is the question of what sense does it make to project fears into something that I don't have fears around. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Niklaus. So the, the, the difference here is that we are not projecting any fear. We are going into the resource of fear that we have inside ourselves. And we are seeing what information does our fear have for us. You're going to look at what information your fear has for you instead of, I don't have any fear. It, we're putting aside the story that fear means a particular thing. Having fear means this or having fear means that. And we're just going to uh, look, you're just going to look at fear as a resource, as a, a, a chest of some, some kind of information. Okay, without thinking, do I have fear? Do I not have fear? You're just going to go into the chest of fear inside your body and, and see what information does your fear have for you. Okay, I just wanted to say like a little, a little story. 
um, just to inspire you and the and the purpose or the benefits of of doing this kind of work. There is a man as a, a psychotherapist who who wrote a book called The Power of Fear, and and he he basically his book is about his fifteen years of working with mainly women who were sexually abused, and what he sees is that women's fear in a lot of these cases, in a huge majority of cases, and he he um, reports a lot of cases, is that women's fear sparks up and, and says they're, they're doing something, they're being invited to something, and the fear of the woman tells them, don't do this. I don't trust this guy. And the woman's survival strategy, you know, for a lot of reasons, patriarchy, whatever, not, not even being contact with the con consciously with fear, they repress the fear. And then they, they, they allow themselves or inadvertently put themselves in situations of high risk and actual danger because there was along the way, two, three, four, seven, 10, 12 instances that their fear told them, do not do this. And they ignored it. And this is because not because there's something wrong with them, but because we are not taught to, to look at our fear because the first thing is like, I don't, I don't have fear. And so, because having fear is seen as a really negative thing. You know, if I'm scared, if I'm, if I have fear, uh, I'm not trustworthy. If I'm uh, have fear, I'm weak. There's something wrong. And so even unconsciously, there's a huge block to even, even admit that, do we have a chest of fear? And so this is, I'd like it to kind of suspend what you would normally think of fear and just really experiment going into this place, just going to, into the fear that you have inside your body as a, as a resource, as a chest, as a, as a kind of fountain. And, and you, you go and check out what the fear has for you. And yes, three minutes each. And I will tell you when the three minutes are over and to switch, switch roles. Is that a bit clearer, Niklaus? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Arkana. All right, are, you, are we ready yeah. at all? Yeah, I'm ready to set up the breakout rooms and yeah, I'm just trying to look through the chat. Okay, got it. We'll make sure that no one is alone, even if there's a group of three. Okay. Cool. Um... You got it? Yeah. I'm just signing. You can already start feeling the fear. I'm going to a breakout room. What <laughs> will happen? What will happen? Will I be, will it work? Will the, will the internet connection work? Will I be with someone who's not speaking the same language? Oh, all of these things are already happening. And they're information, they're just information. Good luck. I'll stay here, yeah. And if I need to go into any of the rooms, I will move into the room. We're coming back. So I know that some people are just continuing to practice for this more the whole minute because I'm 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 thinking that they enjoyed it so much. But I, I'd like to how was it for you to to even consider that fear is a resource? There's a well of resource of fear that has a lot of information for you. I want to hear you guys. And just just speak. You don't need to ask permission or anything, just like unmute yourselves and say, how, how was this? So and uh, go. Yeah, we were in the, I was in the group with uh, Sabrina and, and we were talking about fear and because she ride horses and I train in the martial art, we learn how to deal with those fears. So mm. our brain automatically manage it. Mm. You know? So if, to go to even to, deep dive into the resource was like within like one or two step it seemed like we both managed it so yeah 
But could you so, get the information? Could you get the information from the fears? I I did, but I think after like the first and second one, I think I was just making stuff up just so mm. I could manage more of it. Yeah. But, yeah. But it was like, okay, whatever, you know, you're making, you're making stuff up. Mm. Remember that I said that that was going to happen? That your brain's going to go like, oh, I'm making stuff up. And it, it yeah. could be that it, there could be some making stuff up. It doesn't matter. It's, 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 it's like a new skill, a new skill. We're going to try everything that we can to, to see if we can get it, right? So it's totally appropriate to, to explore. This is, you know, it's like the first pancake. It's always going to be a little messy. And the second pancake is a little bit better. And the third pancake is a little bit better. And I like pancakes, <laughs> as you can, because you can see. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. Anybody else? What did you discover? Could you, how was it for you to, to go into the well or the chest of your fears? Go. Yeah. So uh, my, uh, the room breakout roommate was Olga and she made a remark that was interesting. Uh, she said, I'm noticing how the first first few fears is about what people will think about what I'm doing or how mm -hmm. I'm interacting with this object. It's mostly about what how people will perceive us. And I thought personally that's an, that's an Indian thing, but maybe not. It is <laughs> it's more global than not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's a big fear, you know, and it's it it comes it, it's so the thing is that it it's information you know that's what your attention is in your attention is what how will people perceive me and it's it's great to know that that's you know part of your energy is being spent on this on this attention so cool thank you anybody have, else go um uh, oh, sorry i had that too at first and what i noticed was that as i oriented into my fear it was like using a muscle i didn't that wasn't very strong but once i once i reoriented and it was as if wow like all this all this information started just showing up and i was like wow that's really there that's really in me that i have this fear and i hadn't i hadn't i didn't get it before yeah thank you thank you Thank you, Nicole. There was someone that was speaking that kind of clashed at the same time as Nicole. Would you would you go and speak? Because I I didn't see who it was. Um, on, hi. Oh. Hello. Hi, I was with uh, in the breakout room with Todd, and um, huh. I we talked about like we each like did the thing, and we just sat together just being which I appreciated and then in the moment of like a couple of moments after like giving up on figuring out anything I realized the fear I have as I'm holding I had my journal like one of the fears I had around my sense of like oh maybe I'm too because I felt very possessive and angry at the thought of anyone reading it and then that's a part of me like this part who has like a very firm sense of self or firm sense of like that's mine Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really know how to like consciously access that part in certain moments. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting to be like, oh, I have this thing with me most of the time that a part of like the way I fear this thing is a way to access this part of me who's very firm about like my space and me. Mm -hmm. So Perfect. that was fun, interesting that's really that's really great this is exactly why we're doing this is to access that every fear that we have has some important information about you and about your life and i see michael you're next and nicolas you're next it has information about you you know information about wow i want to you know i want to be safe in this room or hey i'm really this is really important to me my personal space i really care about that your fears will tell you what matters to you will tell you about what matters to you. And if you can listen to the fear without judgment of what it means, then you can, you can actually act. You can find ways to act consciously, act responsibly, have wise actions that handle your fears. 
So, Michael, what did you get? Uh, so I met with Rosaria. I don't, I'm not sure she's still here because she was waiting for her daughter to meet her. Mm -hmm. But um, I was talking about my phone. And I started by appreciating the good things it does for me. And then all these fears about losing the connection or the connections that live through my phone being so complicated that I can't ma ma imagine, I can't manage it. And I saw the darkness of my phone and things felt very dark. And Rosaria was talking about trees, which she at the end explained are very important to her. She's learned a lot from trees, but her first fears that came up were about dangerous people lurking in the trees mm -hmm. and then dangerous animals lurking mm -hmm. in the trees yeah and um and then she said she was most scared of the darkness inside herself mm -hmm. and then at the end when she was talking about how much it's trees give her hope mm -hmm. i just th there was a sense in which the way our hopes and fears are so connected with each other Mm -hmm. They form a kind of dialectical relationship where to hope for things means to look the pot potential of losing hope, which are the greatest fears young. So I found yeah. that very interesting, that discovery. Thank you. I mean, you know, there's, I, I do this, uh, I hold this space for people to be with their fears without considering them good or bad, just as resource. Like, like North isn't better than South or East isn't better than West or vice versa. And so having a fear is not inherently bad or not inherently good, but it can, it can be a resource for your life. And so it's even, even right here, right now, it's kind of difficult. And it's always difficult for people who are first starting to feel fear without trying to compensate with, but, but, but I have hope, but, but, but this is also the positive. Even could you sense this need to kind of, to kind of like, oh, I have fear, but, but I'm okay. Or, but it's not very big or to kind of um, balance some kind of, um, so, some kind of like wrongness or goodness. Thank you, Jean. There's there was there's often this tendency to counterbalance because a lot of people are afraid of fear, are afraid of feeling fear, are afraid of what it means to feel fear. You know, a scared person is not trustworthy. Nobody wants to be untrustworthy. A scared person is weak nobody wants to be weak okay no one wants to be seen as a problem okay so even right now a simple exercise of letting the fear come up and what is the information already you could feel already you could feel the awkwardness which is a low level fear the hesitation which is also a low level fear the worry a low level fear am i doing this well uh, even even um, someone said we were trying to figure it out, right? Like the, even, you know, it was Karwita, even trying to figure it out, trying to understand, trying to get there, there was a fear of not getting there, of not, there could be, I mean, I'm not saying that there was, but there, there's often like a fear of what happens if I don't get it? Will I, will I be left behind? Will I, but what actually, if you boiled it down, each one of your fears tells you something that really matters to you. It's actually connecting with your heart. So if I'm scared that a person might be lurking behind a tree, that means I care about my personal safety. I care about being okay and, and walking in the woods without having any harm. You know, I'm, I'm scared of missing a connection. That means connection is important to you. You know, if we can translate, if we can look beyond fear is bad, fear means this, fear means that, we can distill what really matters. Thank you so much. Nikolaus, we have time for one more, and then there's the next, a next yeah. project. Make it quick. 
So, uh, funny thing, I also picked the phone <laughs> because it was something I could think of fears. And then actually what came to my mind was I too much like in the mind instead of feeling it. And what I see when I think about that is actually the fear of did I do it wrong? So, yeah, that's yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, even even this, like this, it's a, such a, a, a common fear. Did I do it right? Did I do it wrong? And it's actually one of the fears that come very often reinforced with school. Because in school, there's a right way, there's a wrong way. And it, oftentimes it's even before school. You know, there's a right way of making the bed. There's a right time to eat. So it, it, it's not born in school, but it's very reinforced in schooling eh, to get to say the right answer instead of exploring, instead of learning, instead of witnessing, instead of going through the, the, the learning space, there's a huge focus on right, wrong. And so then we get this, reinforced fear I, I i hope i do the right thing i hope i do the right thing or else and then or else is all these stories attached to not doing the right thing and so it's really important to it if you want to if you want to explore fear as a way of of, of connecting to your heart connecting with unknown discovering you can start you could start noticing that you'll have fears that are from right now from just the present moment, they exist in the moment, and then they disappear. And then there's fears that you've been having for a long time. They weren't originating. They didn't originate in the present moment. It's a fear that you got in high school, or maybe at home, or maybe something happened. It's not, it could even be from yesterday. And I'm going to gonna share with you a, a trick. Not many people in the world know about it. But there's a distinction, there's a difference between a fear or a feeling that originates in the moment and a, a feeling that, and a, and a fear, a fear that actually started, like the first, the, the first point of origin was in the past, is that we, I call those fears from the past, I call them emotions, and I call it a feeling the feeling of fear from the present. It's just to help differentiate. And they feel exactly more or less the same thing. It's both of them are fears. But if you are experiencing a fear from the past, that means part of you is not really in the present. That usually means that it's a kind of a trauma. Something in the past is being activated in the present, but it's actually, you can, you, you can try to deal with, it in the present but it won't it won't matter it won't heal it because it the feeling the fear the emotional fear does not belong in the present it belongs in the past so usually i give an example which is i don't know you're talking to your partner or you're talking to a friend and you you are uh, scared or you feel angry about something about something they said but it's actually it's it actually comes because your father said the same thing or your mother said the same thing or your school teacher said the same thing. And, and what you're getting is this memory, it's this kind of reactivation. And you're no longer talking to your friend or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, your partner. You're talking, you're, your whole emotional body is act, thinking that it's talking to your father, your mother, the person who your uh, emotion originated. So this is the are the similar basic principles of trauma in, in psychology. And so the definition, the usefulness of the definition between a feeling of fear and an emotion of fear is that the feeling of fear, it's the usefulness of this, it's for you to heal it. It's for you to use it to take to a healing process. You can do that in many different ways. There's lots of ways to deal with trauma, but it's not to be dealt with right then and there. But a feeling of fear, you use it to handle things. So feelings are to handle things and emotions are to heal things. And a lot of people are trying to use emotions to deal with things and it doesn't work. I'm activated. 
this is a this is a reactivity, this is a trigger. I'm going to go and take care of it. I'm going to come back until I'm centered again. And then there's these fears that are from the moment. And how do you know that a fear is from the moment? If it lasts longer than three minutes, it's not from the moment. If, if you feel most people don't even go into, I don't know, 40 years old without really consciously noticing a feeling of fear because we have so many emotions um, that need to be healed. So that's not good or bad. It's just, we, we're just not aware of the feelings of fear, but it's the feeling of fear, the conscious fear that we can use to navigate and to say, hey, I care about the water. I care about safety. I care about you. I want to listen to you. I care about you. I want you to listen to me. Are you with me? So these kinds of questions are, I'm using fear from the moment, not the fear from, oh my God, I'm going to freeze. Uh, uh, everybody's going to ridicule me. Uh, what if they don't understand? What if, what if I'm making a fool of myself? All of these fears are taking me from the present, whereas the other fears are putting me in the present. Any questions about what I said? I know Maura, you have a question. Go ahead. Maura or Maura, you are on. Uh, Sorry, I just wanted to call your attention to the fact that they're asking you to slow down. I don't think you saw that request. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Maura. Thank you for using your fear. And then you made a wise action to bring my attention to it. And so this is called collaboration. And this is, this is how you can use fear to, to change, to, to, to create what matters to you. Okay. So is there any question about what I said so far? Um, not, I'm not so. sure if... Um... Yeah, I, I, I want to understand, know if I understood correctly. You were saying emotion of fear is something that's from the past that you can heal. And the feeling of fear is something that's more in the present that we can use to navigate the moment. Is that what you were saying? Exactly what I'm saying. Exactly what I'm saying. And okay. I know Olga, yeah, do you have any more, want to say anything else about that? Or was that, it? okay, thank you, Lakshmi. Olga is saying, Fears from the past to the extent that I can notice them sometimes seems, seem to me to come out of nowhere and take over and they take over more completely and seem to be more difficult to articulate or explain like a mute panic out of nowhere. Perhaps this is all obvious. So thank you, Olga. That's, it shows that you have a, a big capacity for self-observation of your emotional states. So this is this is actually something that it's also a, a way that a marker to feel, am I in a feeling of fear or am I in emotion of fear? Usually when we're in emotional fear, emotional reactivity, our options to behave are very limited. And like you said, they, took, they take over completely. There's difficulty in articulation because we are taken over from the present. You know, we are suddenly part of us is in the past, is living in somewhere else where our options for being in the world are very limited. This is why I'm saying that it's really important to use conscious fear to be in the present, even for learning. Because if you are learning and you are in an emotional reactivity, you're not in the present, you're not going to be able, your options for creating, for learning are going to be really narrow because you are not in the present. And so thank you, thank you Olga for, for bringing it. It's, it's, it, it, look, it really feels like that, that you're, um, at least for me, I'm, I'm great, I'm just, I'm centered, I'm grounded, and then suddenly um, a trigger happens and I'm, I'm activated, my, my, my emotional fear or anger or sadness is activated and I'm no longer I'm full of my tools and my presence because I'm in that situation in the past. And it's, I can, sometimes it's hard to even notice. And this is why one of the markers that I'm sharing with you is the time. Something happened and you feel angry or you feel scared 
Okay, look at your clock. If three minutes afterwards, you still feel the same thing, it's an emotion. It is not a feeling. And it's a people have, you know, the same feeling for years, for weeks, for generations, you know, fear of the, of the, of the neighbor, fear of someone who looks different than you. These are emotions. These come from, these are learned emotions. These are, they come from trauma. Okay. And so what do you do when you have an emotion? Like I said, take that emotion and go through an emotional healing process or um, so that you can heal the original trauma, the original emotion. Okay, so we're going to go back into the learning from the unknown. Because if you're not present and be able to navigate fear, you can't walk in the unknown. Because the unknown is unpredictable. Yes, Liz, you say when we did the breakout room experience, it's possible that both emotional and feeling of fear came up. That is right. That's right. But at the time, I didn't want to, to tell you, like, is it an emotion? Is it a fear? Because most people would then be thinking, oh, emotional fear is bad. I'm going to try to only have feelings of fear. And so I just wanted you to connect with the feeling of fear. But it's true. Some people were more in the emotion. Some people might have experienced a few emotions. Some people, none. But you can, you can experience both. So as I was saying, the unknown is by nature unpredictable. And learning in a mainstream way is mostly about predicting, about knowing, remember, about understanding. If I can understand, I can control. If I can understand, I am safe because it's predictable. That's why it's so easy. It's, it's a, a very popular, not easy, but a very popular way of educating is through knowledge, through information, through, through logical process of information. Because once you get a new knowledge, then that part of life is predictable. This plus this equals that. This after this is this. And then you, you build, you build a world, a world of familiarity that comes with predictability. And then you can, you can, you think you know how to act and you know how to act within the realms of the predictability. But the thing is, life is not predictable. A relationship is not predictable. Discovery is not predictable. Adventure is not predictable. Actually, if adventure was predictable, it wouldn't be adventure. Learning, if learning was predictable, it wouldn't be learning. You already would know. And so the, the current educational system is actually designed to stop learning but to just create a certain level of predictability and what it does it completely crushes creativity it really really um it serves to to create great obedient people but not very creative not very um not capable of imagining a future that is bright not able to imagine other ways of learning, other ways of relating, other economic systems, other ways of doing pretty much everything. And so we are going to now going a little bit into the unknown. I, I have no expectation. Like we're going to go this as an experiment. Okay, As an experiment means that if things don't work, that's part of the experiment. There's, there's no pressure for it to be the result being in a certain way. The only thing that I would ask you to do is to experiment fully, go with it, and we can always extract a learning, learning, skill learning from it. What I'm going to ask you to do is that you go into complete unknown and you speak, you let yourself speak from the unknown and your mind is going to try to go like no but uh, oh yeah this this makes sense I'm going to say this because it's logical and you're going to say it and if you do that you are leaving the space of unknown and entering the space of known so we're just going to have fun and and try to create value 
create value for the other person, but not from a place of knowing, not from a place of familiarity, but allowing some other um, resource in you speak. So the resource that I'm talking about is your being. Your being, it's, it's kind of a weird thing because I'm talking about being as an object, but actually being is a verb. But most of the times, we tend to, I, to think of ourselves as a thing, <laughs> right? I'm Vera. No, Vera is my name. I'm not Vera. You are high. No, actually, you're not high. High is your name. So what, what are you really? What are you really? Are you your body? Are you your mind? Are you your actions? What is a being? You know, a being is actually the unfolding experience of whatever it is that you call yourself, you. And, and this is a resource by itself. So I'm going to ask you to go into the experience of being alive, just the experience you're going to go a breakout room in groups of three. So actually a tool, if you could just already start um, just forming groups of three, you're going to groups of three and one person is going to go first and you're going to talk to um, another person of your, of your three cell. And the person, the, the third person is going to be a coach. Okay. The job of the coach is to coach the, the possibilitator, the person who goes first, who's trying to speak from the unknown. You're going to coach them into mm, speaking from things that are unpredictable, that are, that, are, that are not known, that are not known for that person. So you have to, have to use your intuition, use your, your own sense of, I, mm, I think they're being safe. Mm, I don't know. I think, I think they know it. And, and you will say, okay, try something else. Speak, speak about another thing. Speak, and you're going to coach them. Just, just coach them. Just say, try another thing. Try another theme. Look at another part of themselves. So that the, the possibilitator is, can just experience what it's like. Where, where do I go? Where do I, where do I pull the information from to speak? And, and the the client, there's going to be a client or a person who receives the information. And all you do is receive. You just focus on receiving without any resistance. Okay. Because there's a, there's a, a thing that happens when you're listening in a defensive way that it just energetically, it just blocks, blocks this experience from happening. It needs a little bit of relaxation. And so I'm going to give you a prompt. Okay, I'm going to give you a prompt, which is that the, the receiver is going to say, is going to say something about their lives, that they are the question that they have. It, you just used, you just one sentence, okay, one sentence. I have a question of how do I create my, my school? I want to create a school. I don't know how to, how to do that. Or it could be what, how can we heal racism? in the world or what does it take to to create a global movement where people can uh, be sustainable actually um live in harmony with earth it does not have to be reasonable questions it could be impossible questions but are questions that you hold okay it's try not to make something up it could be very personal or not very personal but just something that is real Okay, so the person who's going to receive, they ask the question. They say, I have this question. Okay, and the person who, the possibilitator, the person who's going to experiment speaking from the unknown, you are going to allow, you're going to reach into the unknown, which is you have to get out of your head. You have to get out of all of the things that are familiar to you. And you're going to go and to let and start speaking. It doesn't need to make logical sense. It doesn't need to be uh, a solution. This is a practice mostly for you to speak. It's not for the listener to get a solution, okay? Or a brand or anything. It's a practice for you to speak and just radically rely 
on the words that are coming out of your mouth. Okay. Just, just speak and stay present. You know, you're going to feel fear. You just use that fear to move forward, to, to, to stay speaking and to be centered. And it's also not about saying gibberish. Okay. It's not about, uh, I don't like a giving up. Okay. Just please, please, whatever you do, even if you're feeling really frustrated, just get back to your center and, and let yourself say things. And it, it might not make any things sense at first and then might make some sense. It doesn't matter. We're just going to look where can we jack in that source of information. Okay. And it's going to be crazy. This is a crazy space. Okay. It's, um, has anyone ever done this before? <laughs> right. Okay. One person, she's been in on space with me. Okay. It's crazy. You know, we don't learn this skill anywhere. I wish that there's this skill because it, it, it opens creativity. Okay. And if you practice this, I promise you, because that's part of the work that I do. It gets really, not just fun, but really valuable. Things start coming out of your mouth that are like, whoa, I didn't even know that I had this inside of me. You know, like some of the best speeches, some of the best um, kind of almost like dragon speak, people who are taking a stand and say, this needs to be said in the world, come from this place. Something else in them speaks through them, they allow something bigger than their understanding to speak. Okay. And so you don't, it's, it's really, everybody ha can have access to this and everybody will have a kind of block bigger or smaller, depending on your addiction to understanding your addiction to knowing your, your addiction to controlling, yeah, which we all have. Mm -hmm. And so let's, let's make this a practice. And, and I, I'd like to demonstrate, I'd like to demonstrate. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to be doing the, the speaking from the unknown, but I'm going to give uh, a coaching. So actually I'm going to, I'm going to ask Nicole because she, she, she said, she put her right hand up. So she's done this before and who would like to be the receiver for this experiment? We're just going to do it for a couple of minutes here. Oh, thank you, Liz. Okay, Liz, would you unmute yourself and basically, you know, say what is the question that you have? The question I have uh, concerns um, education and everything that we're doing wrong that's stifling creativity, harming young people. Like we've been working for 20 years to shift this. It's, it's not working. So what, what is the question itself? So I know that it's a subject, but okay. can you frame it as a question? Sure. How do we contribute to shifting and creating better possibilities for young people in public education? So I'm just going to give you one more just coaching, because when you say we, then this, this, this speaking okay. would be about everybody. Would you say, how do I? Yeah, go. How do I contribute? Yes the shifting uh, and creating better opportunities for students in public school education. Cool. Hey, Nicole. This silver, silver grandmother, silver woman, you're doing it. You're, you're on track. You're here. You're, you're bringing it and go the, the children, the children, show so relax a little bit more nicole you're like pushing words out of you just let the next word come when it comes yeah and 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 look at liz look really yeah be be close to her be with them be with them be open. how 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 to be with him be with them curious and beckon, beckon them, beckon them into the spaces you're in with them. Like fishing, fishing for the, the spark, 
they bring and and enticing it out and showing it showing how it how it can go speak about the spark yeah it's it's there in in each person and and takes tempting takes alluring and it's the it's what they're here to bring each of them and and you can sense it and and have it magnify the space for it to come into okay thank you a little silent clapping for nicole so that you tried something thank you so what were some of the things that you were doing nicole that you could you know hints for other people to practice a kind of keeping coming down to come from not here and yeah when you coached me to kind of loosen that really worked to because there was fear there was fear of doing it wrong of saying something stupid of of not serving somehow and and that yeah it caused this tightening and jitter and then following your coaching of opening and just yeah orienting to down here and and let the words come from that source of not knowing mm -hmm. Could you, could you all see that if you have fear and the fear freezes you, if you don't, don't relate to fear in a different way, then it's going to, it's going to block your words. Yeah. This is why it's important fear have a, a have a, a matured, a more matured relationship with fear so that you can have fear on one hand and speak anyway, instead of oh, I can't. And so this is what I, this is what I'm inviting you to do. So no pressure that you actually like are going to say something so incredibly poetic that it's going to dazzle the other person this is not about impressing anyone and this is about the the thing that i'd like you to really focus is to go to that place because if you really can can tap into the resource of unknown remember it's huge compared to what you know then you can go back there and back there and back there. And so really focus on just navigating yourself into the unknown and let the next word say, speak, and let the next word roll out without, without censoring. And um, another, another hint is there's, there is a kind of poetry, and not poetry in the sense of the word itself, but there's a, a, there's a tempo that is different from the mind. The mind is kind of fast in terms of words, but it's um, there's something, there's some another movement when it when it's coming from the unknown, like another rhythm. So try not to force anything out, but but do speak. You know, do 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 try to speak. Don't just stay in silence. And whatever you do this is the right way because that's you're trying to navigate yourself so there's no wrong way to do this because the territory is you there is no wrong way to do you to go to navigate you okay this is there's only learning there's only experiencing so lakshmi you asked how do we decide who is what okay the let's let's see the possibilitator who the, the first person who goes into speaking is going to be the person with the shortest hair and then you decide who's the rest okay so and Niklaus I will say more about um I will answer more questions later okay so do are we ready a tool with the yes you will all each one have four minutes Okay, it's not a long time, but it's enough time to kind of go, oh, when is this going to be over with? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's open and good luck. And I will, I will come in and help with a little bit of coaching. I'll come in and come out. Atul, 
you're the person with the shortest hair uh, mm. in this case. And so you are the <laughs> possibilitator. Uh, would you would you go first as a receiver, Olga, so that I can coach? Okay. Yes. So, so just please ask. find, yeah, just, just say what your question is. My question is, how do I know how I should be in the world? What the right way for me to be in the world is? Yeah, so stay centered, you're doing great. And allow yourself to connect to that unknown and just let the words come out, but stay connected to Olga. Okay? Don't move away from Olga, stay connected to her. Stay the way you want to stay. Don't have to act. Don't have to fit anywhere. Joy, follow your joy. Doesn't have to be proper. Just stay. Why do you worry? Don't worry. Wait, wait. Ross, I'm going to give you a quote. So even, even those sentences, they're kind of sentences that you already know. You've heard them somewhere, right? So it's just, that's, that's great. And then just go into even a little bit more crazy into the unknown. Let, let yourself not, that the next word, you don't know what it's going to be. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Going even more into the unknown. And, and just, it doesn't have to be the whole sentence that comes to you, just one word and then the other one and then the other one. Go. Yes, go. Just the first word that comes, even if it makes no sense, just the first word and then yeah. the second word. Yeah. And Olga, can you repeat that question again? Yes, yeah. my question is word how, word. how do I know how I should be in the world? Like how, yeah, how would I? How, yeah, how can I figure that out? Spontaneous, not one type, many. Don't fit. Yeah, allow that sentence to extend a little bit. Like, don't mm. fit and continue the sentence. Yeah. yeah. See what else comes up. You can be many things. Why one thing? Blue. Blue yes. like a river, like a liquid. Okay. Don't cast. Post, come to an end. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for trying, for going there. It's it's it feels kind of a crazy space, huh? Yeah. yeah. Great. <laughs> so now let's switch. Oh boy. Okay. okay. <laughs> um. So wait, I want to I want to I want to participate too. Can I participate? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'd like to be the the receiver. Olga, my question, and you you're my coach, or no, you are uh, a tool. You're Olga's coach. So uh, allow her yeah. to really be like, you, if you sense that something familiar, say, uh, talk about, you know, go go even more in the unknown. Okay. Yeah. Olga, how how do I create? How to create a global movement that no, how to motivate transformation that people do personal transformation in a global scale speak um Hmm. Talk about pain.
I'm going to help you coach also. Can, so when, yeah, when continue you look looking up, at you're, continue yeah. looking at yeah. Thank you. At Vera, if you're looking up, you're looking into your mind. Mm. Yeah, and, and let the words say. Forget about making sense and and having a solution. Just just let the thing that speaks in you from the unknown. Don't try. Go, keep going. Just one word. Let let. Don't center it. Just this is okay to say whatever. Really, this is about. It's not about what you say. Is about going there. Mm, I don't know. Is what I want to say. <laughs> yes, your mind is gonna try to know. <laughs> just just I'm let another thing say. I don't know. Uh, um. I don't know. I want to say listen. I, I don't know. I can't not think. Um, ooh. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it is not impossible, even it's though so I hard. think it, it is, mm -hmm. can be really hard. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, really. Because it's it's like, it's, yeah. oh, where do I go? Yeah. <laughs> How do I know to answer a question? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's so subtle. I mean, sometimes we just switch back to mind in in sourcing our answer, right? We're so much used to going back to the mind to get the answer. Mm -hmm. that it's, and I'm in the know, knowledge business. So to... for me, like I really notice it, and I'm trying to not do that, and then I don't know what else to do. <laughs> like what? Exactly. So bad. Okay, last last Thank one. You. You're now going to be my coach, Olga. So because okay. you're in the knowledge business, you have to be really like ah. Uh, Mm -hmm. you, this right. you know already okay <laughs> Atul, what's your what's your question genuine question how do i live life to my fullest potential breaking the walls that are visible and invisible. And there's walls that are in your focus, your, but at ones that are out of focus. By planting, it's by planting planting the the like ah it's like about letting the the tenderness the tenderness of the spark this you can see you can you can see the spark you can see you can feel this the you're connected to this kind of spark of life that that is generous and that is loving and it's about that is the force that breaks the walls like like a like you know these plants that grow through cement and they they crack it they don't need to go but they but they go they go they're i noticed you were speaking yeah. about tenderness and i kind of noticed something in your i don't know in your face i don't know is there something more there that you can say thank you tenderness is not collapse it's actually this their tenderness is a is a is the force that finds the spaces to move forward instead of cutting it finds the spaces like 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 the 
the plant that finds the root, the space where the root can pass through the rocks. And it's actually a strong force that it's nonlinear and flexible. And so, and it's a completely different way of looking at tenderness. But that's, that's your superpower, Atul, is, is to find the way through the cracks. And now the time is over, so I'm going to tell them to come down. Thank you. Wow, I'm so moved, yeah. I'm so moved. That was really good. I'm sending the message. We're also coming close to an end. So I'm just calling people back. Hello, welcome back, welcome back. And since some people are still having fun, you know, because if you're not having fun, you probably would have like left the, the space as quick as possible. And we have one minute, basically. Thank you, Sophia and Nicole. Um, do you want to share a little bit about that process? How was it I had, go? I had the same, uh, I'm so sorry, it's like three o'clock in the morning here in, in Bali, so um, I can't remember all the names, uh, but uh, the lady that you did work with, you know, where you were yeah. coaching. Yeah, and so she, Yeah, so she was really on point, you know, and and... And so she was the, uh, she, uh, yeah, she helped guide us because she was now very clear. And mm -hmm. so when she went first, and she had the shortest hair, so she went first. So it was it was great because then we we got deep really quickly, and it was through almost through osmosis that that we got, you know, and, and I know this from fear or inspiration or love, if someone is in love or inspiring, you automatically pick it up and you- That's like, amazing. You know, yeah, and and that's how it was. It was like, boom, boom. That's why we got out quick. We got out quick. Huh? <laughs> like we were solving each other's problem and, and it was just click, click, click. And yeah, I I'm, we said stuff that was very, very precise without saying too much and to the point mm -hmm. to just very endearing stuff that just made you know you can see it in their face when you hit the mark you know they're mm. they're responsive they're not just like thinking they're like heartfelt and touch so that Yay. was hard. that was good that was good thank you thank you hi i so i'm I, we came to an end. We are coming to an end of the of the session. I'm so happy because not many people in the world go to the place that you've just gone. Okay, it's super rare, and I'm so glad that you did. And so, in this last minute, I just want to say first is that I made a mistake with the name of the book, and it's not the power of fear; is the gift of fear. I'm sorry, and I'm, I'm I'll I'll put it in, and if. There's like one sentence, just not the whole thing, but one sentence about this experiment, just unmute yourselves and we go popcorn, like pff, pff, about, about how it was this experience. Apasionante. Wow. Thank you. Wild. Yes. Talking Human. to the God. Thank you both. With. Thank you. It was a very different experience for me trying to stay at the edge of the unknown, letting letting the experience of not knowing, but trying to answer the question, trying to speak to the question out of my own uncertainty, staying there. Thank you. It's a good experience. Thank you. Um, validating. Me, I, validating, yes. One sentence. For me, Go. Uh, soothing to listen. Mm. Others. Yeah. Mm. Unlearning whiteness. Mm. Yeah. 
how much aliveness was in the space for you when you were practicing? This is like, well, you know, a little bit of aliveness. And I know some people are tired. It's two in the morning in Bali, by the way. Thank you. Hi. This not much aliveness. This, whoa, I was at the edge of my seat. There was so much aliveness. Could you, no judgment, just how much was it? Like a lot of aliveness, a little bit. Cool. I, I do want to say in our group, one of the things that added to the aliveness was one person expressed what I experienced as a need for dialogue, not to mm -hmm. stay in roles, but to move okay. between roles. And, and that affirmation of dialogue brought more life, more energy, at least to me. Yeah, that's, you know, you did another experiment. You did the experiment that you wanted to do. I'm glad. Olga was asking, how do I practice that on my own? I would say practice with a friend. You know, don't practice on your own. Get a get a person and just go, you know, watch this this recording and, and practice. And get yourself to a fear club. There's this these workshops, they're online, sometimes offline, and, and where you you explore the hidden powers of fear. So if you go to fear club dot my strikingly dot com you you will see people all over the world that do this kind of crazy experiments to get out of the the known okay hi my name is Vera Frankel I loved being here with you and this is my work uh, so if you want to know more about it just reach out to me I'm on the website thank you very much everyone thank you thank you thank you, thank you so much, much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Vera. This was so healing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, even even at three a.m., I I am awake. I feel alive. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Gracias, Vera. Mira. Gracias, Albert. Bye bye.